One, two, three, four. <laughs> done the best I can So now it's up to you To finish what I began Yes, I will always love you And I'll be there just for you So in all that you do, my child To yourself, you must be true So promise me that you will fight For what it is that you believe no matter what you do in life, it's in the given that you'll receive. Wherever the road may take you, those you meet along the way. Promise me that you will count your blessings every day. And a very good day to you, or morning, or evening, whenever you happen to catch this. I am Jason Hawes, back here once again. Some might say, finally, back here once again. I I would be one of those who would say, finally, back here once again, by the way. But I am back doing another podcast here on American Faith Today. What can I say? I've been busy, and I've devoted my time to to some other things. But I do always enjoy uh, getting back here when I can, and when I find the time to, and when I take the time to. And it's always great to have some of you out there who listen and listen consistently and and share this many times when you can. Um, some of you perhaps share it uh, a little better or a little more devotedly even sometimes than what I do. Although I do spread it around and, and try to uh, share it in various places and groups and so forth. Um but anyway, I am uh, I am back here tonight, and it is good to be back. And as always, it is great to have you here with me. And, uh, you know, again, some time has passed since the last one. I didn't go back and, and see or check myself to see how long it's been. I think it was uh, earlier this month, um, maybe even... Uh, uh, it was either earlier this month or maybe the tail end of last month. Maybe it's been longer than that. Um, uh, again, I just haven't. Go, I didn't go back and check. But uh, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. But then I, I don't really think this is a dead horse. I'm going to pick up and talk a lot about uh, the subject that I did the last podcast on, which is this coronavirus. But I want to. I want to add something to it, and I want to kind of zero in on what this might mean to the economy, to the global economy, because these are some stories that I've been focusing on. I've been uh, posting a few links this evening, or I posted a few links earlier this evening on the American Faith Today Facebook page. Um, Probably some of you who will listen to this whenever you get the opportunity already saw those links maybe one or two of you already commented or shared some of those links um so certainly it's something that if that is the case then you're well aware of the information but i'll present it to those that are not yet aware or have not yet seen it And, of course, I'll I'll try to elaborate on it with my own words as well. And, uh, you know, I, of course, am am not an economist by any stretch of the imagination. And yet, at the same time and at various times on this show and on this podcast, I have devoted shows or podcasts to the economy and to some troubling economic signs and trends from some economic commentators and some information, and again, specifically these commentators who I feel like generally do a pretty good job and uh, are, I would say, from a layman's perspective anyway, eyeballing the right things, trying to share the right information, and and really not sugarcoating anything. You know, it's not necessarily all all doom and gloom, or at least I don't think that's the the intent, uh, that they would have, but it is 
from what I can tell, their intention to be as honest with all of us as possible. And uh, this is just a, a personal personal opinion and personal feeling and nothing more than that. But I know when I look at the world, well, when I look at what seems to be most important to people in this world, I think one of the things, there, there's a lot of things that if you're a Christian in, the, in these days, in this time, that you need to watch. And you need to pay attention to. Obviously, Jerusalem, obviously that nation that we call Israel today. Um, some other nations, perhaps, in, in that part of the, of the world, in terms of Iran. Um, probably still Iraq. Um, uh, Turkey. Obviously, Russia is one that, that we need to watch. And Syria as well. Um, some have been uh, mentioning things that transpired uh, I, I, here some time ago, but not all that long ago, with some fires in Lebanon as well. And and some have watched that. And that, obviously that's all key. That's all important. Uh, you don't want to get too caught up in the left-right politics, which is something that I think many of us, including myself in days past, did get caught up in and did probably get too caught up in. But you certainly want to watch and you certainly want to pay attention to what governments are doing, uh, not only the government in our country, in the United States, but governments around the world. I know I posted recently on the Facebook page as well uh, just a couple of things about, uh, and I went back and double-checked to, to see what country it was, but... In El Salvador, they have, I believe, maybe a fairly young president. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to that aspect of it. But uh, they're, they're calling him the millennial president or the millennial leader, uh, which, of course, when I hear that, uh, we could be talking about a time frame, but then again, we're past the, the millennium of the year 2000. So I, don't, I generally, personally, tend to think of millennials. Uh, you know, younger people, but uh, he's kind of made a power play there in El Salvador to kind of try to show that he is in control, using the military to emphasize that, uh, as they're saying that he's perhaps taking a fascist turn. Uh, You have uh, apparently the president or former president of Bolivia, also in South America, who's been exiled, and you have this kind of stand-in president they haven't had their i think their election is coming up and uh happens to be a woman and she has passed some sort of law or or made some type of edict that shields the police and military from any type of prosecution whatsoever if they shoot any protesters or demonstrators down there in Bolivia. So we're seeing kind of these strong men, strong people type. Not unlike Donald Trump and the role he's played or tried to play in this country. And they're centralizing power or they're trying to centralize power. I think it it kind of conditions people to maybe accept a strong world leader coming on the stage as the Antichrist will do, Satan excuse me, Satan in that role. Uh, but but I personally think we always need to take a look at the economy. Uh, you know, when even when you look at politics, and you look at politics in this country, why do people, so many people, tend to think that Donald Trump has done such a, such a great job, in their opinion? The economy. They'll take a look and they'll say, "Wow, have you seen the stock market? Do you see? Have you seen how high the stock market is? It, it's at record highs. Never mind the fact that, and of course, they either don't know that or don't pay attention to it or, or choose to ignore it that it's manipulated, that it's that high because of manipulation from the Fed, that it's not necessarily that high because of." Uh, people investing and businesses investing in many cases these businesses are buying back their own stocks 
and uh, distributing distributing them to buying them back on behalf of shareholders or, or what have you. Um, but but you know it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all mirage. And to the average person in this country, anyway, uh, the stock market doesn't mean a hill of beans. You know, unless you have stocks that you have, unless you invest in the stock market, perhaps if you have something that is an investment in, in terms of a retirement, a uh, an, a 401k, or a, some type of a pension, or I, IRA, or, or what have you, then it might mean something to you. But for the average American who's just struggling to get by out there, uh, that stock market being high doesn't do anything to pay their rent or the mortgage on their house, or their car payment, or put food on their table. And, and you know, you look at the unemployment rate, and they say, wow, well, you know, the unemployment rate is really low as well. And again, as was even brought up when people were a little bit more critical, or a lot more critical during the Obama administration, the government really doesn't use and hasn't used for some time the most accurate measure of unemployment in terms of what they choose to look at and what, what metric they choose to use. And at the same time, it doesn't necessarily just what the unemployment rate is doesn't necessarily factor in who has full-time jobs. I mean, it, it might be somewhere in the, in the statistics, in the fine print, if you will, but what the media reports, they don't go into detail about who has full-time jobs, who has part-time jobs, uh, what the wages are, what types of jobs they are in terms of industry and so forth, and whether they're uh, direct hire jobs or through a temp service, and whether or not a person is working just one full-time job or has to have two or three jobs just to try to get by. But we in this country in particular, have become so focused almost solely on the economy in terms of whether or not a president is doing well and deserves to be reelected, we don't even take into account, even for that matter, the Constitution anymore. We don't take into account whether our rights are protected. We don't take into account whether the president, whomever it might be, is staying within the bounds and the parameters of his powers in his office and not going outside of them, not trying to centralize power, not trying to bypass Congress, the courts, and the Constitution. Um, we don't take into account, really, even those of us who say we're conservative, whether or not the government is growing and, again, eliminating rights encroaching upon, infringing upon our rights, whether it is trying to get more involved in our lives or whether it's trying to back away from our lives and let us do our own thing. But no, we, we've just become accustomed to being absolutely laser focused on how's the economy, how's the economy, how's the economy. And you can even bleed that into perhaps the the religious even when it comes to what makes these prosperity preachers so popular, uh, sowing uh, kind of false promises and, and actually trying to get your money and my money to sow a seed while telling us that that will lead to God to bless us when they shouldn't have to beg to supply their ministry to begin with. And if they do, that's red flag number one. But, but again, it's, it's just people in this country, people in this world, are always concerned about their paycheck, their pocketbook, their bank account, and some of that is natural, and some of that is maybe focusing on it more than they need to, and certainly worrying about it more than they need to, especially if they are trying to do things God's way and be pleasing to Him, then He certainly will take care of you if you do that. But what we also have, of course, is we have a global economy. And, and by the way, might I add that just getting back to politics for a moment, any politician can make any sort of promises that they want to make, whether it's Donald Trump, whether it's Bernie Sanders. But do you know something? 
And, and quite frankly, if you're a Christian and if you study the